the fastest 100 meter times in the world this year for both men and women are held by college students. The NCAA was already taking over, but holy smokes, what are we even seeing at this point? There were three absolutely classic early season meets on this weekend. The Texas Relays, Florida Relays, and the Battle on the Bayou out in Louisiana. But even before the weekend hit, it was just sprint highlight after highlight. So if you're a sprint fan, and who are we kidding, that's like 90% of track fans, you're gonna love this one. Starting off at last week's Hurricane Invitational, Japan's Hakim Sunny Brown opened his season in a hotly contested race securing the men's 100m world lead for all of Asia. 10.02 seconds, followed closely by China's Xi Xinyi in 10.06. Olympic year, and the Asian hype train is beginning to move. Youngster from China. The women's 100m went disgustingly under the radar. Centuria James crushed her personal best by almost half a second, and this was en route to an 11.01 second world lead out of absolutely nowhere a legitimate legal world lead from an 18 year old college freshman who I can honestly say I've never heard the name before. And to be honest that time should have been the highlight, yet it was overshadowed by a high school 4x100 meter team. That's right, a team of high schoolers went 38.92 seconds, a new American high school record, and it's truly hard to comprehend relay times, but that's fast enough for this team of again high schoolers to be competitive at a world champs. In the heats. Slightly less impressive when I say that. And lastly, right before the weekend hit, Letzeli Tobogo lit up the track again in South Africa. After a 300 meter world record and world lead, an out of pocket 400 meter world lead, he goes for the trifecta to legitimately cruise a 19.94 second 200 meter time. Look at this man jogging around the bend. The time's honestly almost unimpressive compared to his prior work. That is, until you take into consideration, it was into a hefty headwind of negative 1.2 meters per second. Still, that's three world leads for the man, and the Lyles Toboga conversation is getting spicy already. And that was that for the actual week. But now, the weekend, where the big dogs were out to play. It would be the Texas relays that would be the first to strike, and I swear, there's magic in the air with some of the sporadic results coming out of this state. Gabby Thomas, recent Olympic and world medalist, went absolutely berserk hunting heads in both the 1 and 2. In the 100, once she got moving, it was game over. Gabby Thomas though in lane 7 looking strong, those long strides. It's going to be Gabby Thomas winning this 100. A huge 10.88 seconds. And what would have been a 0.12 PB was just stolen away by a slightly illegal wind of plus 2.2 meters per second. And when Gabby's doing work like this in the 100, you can guess what's going to happen in the 200. Off the bend, she created separation, and that gap just wasn't going to close. 22.08 seconds. A big world lead as the wind stays legal. We're getting closer and closer to the first sub-22 of the year, and it could easily be Gabby to do it. The men's sprints in Texas would be dominated by Frenchman Pablo Mateo. Wait, who? It's starting in the middle of the track by Uja. Now here comes Mateo. Mateo in the blue in lane three. Late charge on seven by Ryan Zizi. 9.92 seconds, and quite literally out of nowhere. His previous best before this was a 10.15 seconds. What the hell? Sadly though, that time would remain his best since the wind was pretty handedly over the limit at 3 meters per second. So with some doubts in our mind, we'd see him hit the track again in the 200, and this time, he'd be in luck. A legal 20.03 seconds for a classy second fastest time of the year. Another big personal best for the man, and certainly some big potential. I did say this week was sprint heavy, but let's talk some field. We got to witness some banging discus action, and clearly the cameraman agreed, because he couldn't stop filming Orman to actually capture the damn throw. Regardless, that's right, Valerie Orman debuted her season with a dominant win, as she throws 67.98 meters, an outright win by 7 meters, and a massive new world lead. 
The Javelin also went kind of crazy with a new NCAA Div 2 record and an American lead by Jordan Davis. He would send the spear out to 83.77 meters, meaning a Division 2 thrower has the number four farthest throw in the world this year. We'll certainly be seeing this lad at the US Olympic trials. An absolute surprise result came from the high school boys high jump. Scotty Vines would win outright by 16 centimeters, going over 2 meters 24, also known as 7 foot and 4 and a quarter inches. That's a dang high schooler. A big 2 inch PR with some pretty rough form. And again, we might be seeing him at the US trials. For the last of the Texas relays, we head back to the track where superstar high schooler Elizabeth Leachman is back from breaking the 5k indoor record last week to break the outright 5k record this week. 15 minutes, 25.27 seconds, and of course, destroying a college field in the process by 35 seconds. Here she is literally finishing in the middle of some runners going for their last lap. 22, 23, hello record book! There is your now record holder oh and how could i forget a four by 200 meter world record i mean world best something people ask why i don't cover relays much i personally find it hard to get hyped unless it's a four by 100 at the olympics or sometimes a four by 400 still pretty cool to see some big names linking up and going hard it's 12805 there is faster than the listed world record 12707 now corrected to Heading out to the historic Florida relays, where the footage of this meet was so well hidden, you'd think they're actively trying to sabotage the sport. Here we'd find Quincy Wilson walking the dang talk. He'd toe the line in a high school only 400 meter field, and he'd pull off this run. The Bulls high school sophomore, just 16 years old. He's going in the straightaway here. What will Wilson run here in the 400 Florida relays? Quincy Wilson of the Bulls school is gonna finish. What did we just see? Wow, 45.19. 0.01 seconds within the US Olympic trial qualifier and 0.07 seconds away from an outright world record for his age group. And again, he's 16 years old and two months. He's got 10 months to go faster. He talked about it, but now he's out here and he's done it. A half a second PR to officially see him destroy at this year's US Olympic trials. I'm fangirling already. We also got to see Alison Dos Santos, the third fastest 400 meter hurdle in history, open in a 400 flat consisting of Kenny Benerick and Alexander Ogando. Dos Santos would take the W going 45.25 seconds. A fantastic opener. But let me just make a point. These three have three Olympic medals and three world championship medals combined. And the fastest 400 of the day was 16 year old Quincy Wilson. The men's 100 meter in Florida would be spicy hot, but again, it would be a college student to be the first man this year to go sub 10. Favor Ashe out of Auburn lays down a slick 9.99 seconds, looking so silky smooth. But the hundreds don't just stop there. Christian Miller would open his senior high school season with the fourth fastest time of this meet, 10.14 seconds. Already close to his insane personal best, of 10.06 from last season. That's just straight up faster than most NCAA athletes right now. And the proof is in the pudding, considering he would have placed second in the NCAA division. X Div 3 superstar Chekna Traore would be hot off his indoor season endeavors, nailing his third national record of the year, 20.23 seconds in the 200. Demisha Ford also did the same, using her momentum to go 22.37 seconds in the women's collegiate tournament. Meter the fastest of the meet, and a time quick enough to land her as the fifth fastest under 20 athlete ever in the US. The women's 100 hurdles saw the first sub 12.8s this year in an oddly thrilling battle. Of course it was two college athletes going for the one and two spots in the world this year. Grace Stark led the charge with a 12.70 flat, followed by Renaya Jones in 12.78. What can't these kids do? The men's collegiate shot put saw a rare anomaly with a glider, CJ Licata, taking the win this weekend in a massive 20 meter throw. It's a rare feat to see an athlete winning without using a form of the spin, and to do it while also hitting the 20 meter mark, just straight remarkable. 
And finally, to wrap up Florida, we got to see a pretty fun relay of the professional Florida elite training squad in the men's 4x100. PJ Austin, Grant Holloway, Aaron Knighton, and Joseph Farnbele would take the baton around in a circle in a world leading time of 37.67 seconds. But the saddest reality of this race is we barely missed an epic top end matchup between Farnbele and Lyles because Lyles fumbled the goddamn baton. Olympic foreshadowing, perhaps. Louisiana would showcase the battle on the bio, and it's a battle we'd get. Quickly, Brianna Lyston of LSU. Brianna Lyston, LSU. Favor of Philly Tiger Olympians. 10.85 seconds. What the fuck? Three women going sub 10.9 and four going sub-11, three of them being college students. Favor of Philly barely squeaks out with the victory, followed by freshman Brianna Liston in a tantalizingly close 10.87 seconds. Okay, yes, the wind was slightly illegal at 2.6 meters per second, but regardless of conditions, 10.87 is the fastest NCAA opener in history. The hurdles on both sides also went hard, in the men's, it would be three athletes going fast enough for number two in the world this year, with Ja'Kalen Scott from Texas A&M leading the pack in a legal time of 13.34 seconds. While Asia Lorenzen goes 12.84 seconds herself, A would have been world lead if it wasn't for those meddling college kids out in Florida on the same day. This week was truly a sprint bonanza. But to be fair, two of the three meets did have relay in the name. Regardless, the early season times the women are putting up is just downright dirty. And that's considering we haven't even seen any of the big four. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.